good afternoon everybody and welcome here. We begin the second half of the regular season here. The chase towards the chase for the championship as I like to call it. And we begin here with the longest race of the season. It'll be 80 laps here at Charlotte. And this should be a very interesting one. This is a race that normally it comes down to who's able to put together the best fuel strategy to be able to get the full 80 laps and get to the checkered flag races we have in the season. And last season, it was Anthony McCreary, who was first of two wins in Season 2. He's still looking for his first win of Season 3. First points were in Season 3, but that was back in the Sprint Unlimited. And that was a non-points event. And a number of his teammates have already found victory lane this season in points-paying events, including Sean Galligan and Cole Baker. So we'll see if McCreary might be able to get something done here today. But there's a lot of other that haven't won yet this season. I would love to be able to do it here this race. So that way they can head into the rest of the second half of the regular season. Basically just worried about consistency, trying to keep themselves up in the top 30 in points. So that way hopefully their win counts towards a spot in the chase for the champion too. Where these drivers are going to have to make sure their finishes are good. Because I'm almost certain we're going to have more than 16 different race winners by the time the checkered flag falls at Eminem Super Speedway beginning our chase. So we may end up having as many as 20, maybe 22, maybe even... You know, I think right now the most we can have is 24 different race winners in the 26 races uh, for the regular season. So that could happen. And that could end up meaning that eight drivers are going to be out of competing for the championship despite having a win this year. So without further ado, we're getting ready to get these cars rolling off. Joshua Sakuli will start on the pole. Kind of ironic, Joshua Sakuli actually started on the pole for the All-Star race as well here last night so he does here starting from the pole position and alongside of him will be dallas mcintosh you can take a look down in the description that's your full starting lineup down there and you will also see the drivers that qualified their way into this race in knockout qualifying look at them here and they include jeremy jones doug shears cody hagan andrew davis William Duncan, Zachary Stoltz, and Garrett Sidner. Those are the seven drivers that raced their way in via knockout the double. That is Brandon Gonzalez on the apron. The number 23 Mitsubishi Lancer out of Gonzalez Motorsport. Oh boy, doesn't look like his day is going to get off to a good start. I don't think that car is even going to get to take the green flag. What a tough break there for Brandon Gonzalez. The wheels have seemed to fall off the train of that team the last couple of weeks. I don't know what's going on there, but that is a tough, tough break for Brandon Gonzalez, 23 team. And it looks like uh, he will be heading to Pitt Road. And we're starting this race. I don't know if that's a repairable issue or not, but regardless, 80 we run here tonight. In the Coca-Cola 600, Joshua Zaculli, Dallas McIntosh, and all Ford front row receive the green flag. We are underway here at Charlotte. And as usual, please bear with the fact that the frame rate's not going to be good until we end up having these cars start to get somewhat spread out. As Dallas McIntosh around the outside line will go to the front. That's kind of interesting because we never really saw the outside line in the All-Star race work at all. It's a McIntosh the advantage of it. And he is out in front. He'll get a valuable bonus point for leading. Will our winner earlier on this season at Texas. Here comes Joseph Srigley in the 24. Cole Baker in the 18. Srigley to the inside looking for the lead. It's a big opportunity here with 80 laps to run for drivers to get themselves to the front, lead a lap, get a valuable bonus point here towards the second half of the regular season. To the point, Cole Baker follows him in second. McIntosh now slips back to third, and they got a bit of a gap between themselves back to fourth place, currently held by Daniel Boyles. That's Sean Galligan and John Arndt right behind him. We'll have to keep an eye on our all-star race winner. Blaine Keys, see how long it takes for him to get up towards the front of the field. Number eight U.S. Army Chevrolet. You can hear the 
sun's been beating down on this racetrack most of the day. It's made conditions somewhat slick, and you can hear these drivers right in the middle of the corner having to really lift down the throttle to avoid sliding up the racetrack and into the wall off the corners of two. Right there sounded like they actually were a little bit more in the throttle out of two than they are out of four. Listen to the two leaders when they come through three and four. Right there you can hear the kind of uh, 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 that is them letting out of the throttle there probably to avoid sliding up a groove and possibly hitting that outside wall off of turn four which we have seen during the all-star race can play tremendous havoc with the race you wouldn't think that even a brush to that wall would cause problems happen and drivers lose a lot of momentum and as a result, a lot of track position. And in a race like this, the longevity of this race, track position is key. Joseph Srigley, Cole Baker, one, two. John Art has now reeled in the top two. He's in third. McIntosh right now runs all by himself in fourth. Here at the back of fifth, Jake Bastinger has it. But here comes Cody Lamish, Sean Galligan, Mike Brown. A couple of teammates there in Daniel Royals, Nathan Hudson. Baskinger headed into yesterday's All-Star race as the and uh, ended up becoming the first retiree. Ended up not even making it into segment two after getting involved in a pit road incident in the middle of segment one. Well, still Joseph Strigley out in front. We're going to look towards the rear of the field. See if we got any stragglers. Doesn't really look like, look like anybody has uh, hit the wall or anything. Everybody still appears to be up in the lead pack of running here at the back. Now, you're probably wondering why would somebody be doing something like this? Well, let's keep in mind first off that Emmanuel Hartnett has a win in the bank. Now, you're earlier in the season. So he can kind of afford some strategy, and right now what he might be doing is he might be just hanging back a little, saving some extra fuel, maybe think about making this race on two stops instead of what we've got engaged as uh, the possibility of a three-stop race. You never know. Young Motorsports drivers are back here, the 222 and 99, so you gotta wonder if they're all on the same page. Trent Dunham back here, and look who also is back here. Pole sitter Joshua Sakuli. it didn't take him to get to the rear of the field, and I don't think that's a result of getting paid. I think he purposely put himself back here. Joshua Michaels is back here, Zach Flickenberg. So you gotta wonder if these guys all thinking some kind of thing here. Right at the back, not use up as much fuel themselves a chance to maybe stretch it a little further than these guys up here who are racing tooth and nail for the race lead. Well, I can't say tooth and nail. They've actually been running single five with each other for the last uh, five or so laps. Now John Art peeks out of line on Cole Baker. And look right there. Cole Baker got back to the throttle there on the high side quicker than Art could. And he's going to use the high side through the middle one and two to hang on to the second position. One thing we did not see in the All-Star race was the high line get any kind of momentum. It seemed like if you got caught in the high line, you were going to fall to the back. Cole Baker showing right there that there is a high groove in the middle of one and two. And Hart's going to try it again on the bottom. Let's see if Baker gets back to the throttle again. Yes, he does right there. It's actually before the middle of one and two. It's kind of almost midway point between turn one and the middle of one and two. Kind of like a quarter of the way through those two turns. Casey right there again, skipping the throttle, Joseph Srigley. And now Cole Baker, looks like he found a little bit of momentum there with that high side. Now back on the bumper of Joseph Srigley again. Cole Baker, what's the issue with Srigley? Keep in mind, Baker has a win this season at Talladega. Joseph Srigley does not yet have a victory. Drivers continue to run single five. Good battle going back here. Jake Baskinger runs right now in the fourth spot. And look who's worked his way all the way up to fifth. All the way back. Chris Stoltz, who was one of the go or go home drivers who raced his way in via knockout qualifying. And he has worked his way up. I believe he started this race from the fourth position. And he is already up inside the top five. Really, really strong car there and that's not really much of a surprise because let's back in the all-star race that uh, John Cittadino and Zach Flickinger both finished inside the top 10 in the all-star race. So 
Not surprising to be seeing the number 86 Toyota out of Fire Ice Racing having a good run right now. Trevor was kind of looking for here in this field and he hasn't really made his presence felt in this run yet. That car right there, Anthony McCurry in the 61, he's actually back in the 32nd position in the spot. So it looks like he's actually uh, utilizing the fall to the back, save some fuel kind of strategy. Blaine Keys, our all star race winner, has been winner Kyle Matthews, winner from Rockingham, UK, and our most recent paying race at Richmond. Zachary Fitzwater also back here. Keep in mind, all these drivers are still in the lead pack. They're just not a lap down right now, by any stretch of the imagination. The driver I was looking for is Emmanuel Hartnett. There he is. He has dropped way, way back now. Emmanuel, as a matter of fact, according to the scoring monitor, he is five seconds behind 40th place Cody Hagen. Right now on the back straightaway, the race leader is just at the exit of the tri-oval at Dog Lake Front Straightaway. I don't know, Hartnett may have laid back a little too much. I'm not certain. Keep in mind, his eight is the race leader, Joseph Srigley, so I don't know, maybe he's thinking that Srigley's gonna get him on the reprieve and allow him to stay on the lead lap. I don't know. All depends on if these three catch that 97, which more than likely they will, because for the most part, Srigley, Baker, and Arndt have kind of worked out a gentleman's agreement where they're just basically running single file, and that's allowing them to lay down really fast lap times. Baker trying to battle back again on the high side as Arndt trying for second place again. And it looks like Baker may have him cleared. Yes, he does. John Art. Well, no, not yet. No, Art's still to the inside. I thought that Art was actually going to let Baker back in line, but no, they're still side by side for second place. This is actually helping Joseph Srigley to be able to check out on these two. And I think now Art has just taken the second position. He has indeed. He'll clear Baker. Drop Baker back to third. He's put down the fast lap times early on in this thing. And the fastest lap time actually goes to Leon Alvarez, who's actually up here inside the top 10. There he is, running in the fifth position. Alvarez with a 30.464. John Hart is the fastest, then Strigley, Richardson, and Dougie Shears right now, the fifth fastest lap. Then Tim Walsh, Charles Sanford, Cut, and Jake Matthews. We talked about Zachary Stoltz running up there right now in the fourth position. Matter of fact, he's looking for more than three wide. What the heck is going on there? John Hart just got around Cole Baker. Srigley, something's wrong with Srigley. Something has gone terribly wrong with the 24. He is way, way off the pace. Whoa, Charles Sanford having to shoot the gap between him and the outside wall. Something is amiss on the 24 car. He's trying to get to pit road. Oh, and Trent Dunham nearly got turned by Dylan Young as they tried making their way around him. Oh my goodness, what has gone on with the 24 car? Strickley, who was out in front for most of this first quarter of the race, that car may have gone down a cylinder. I don't know what exactly is amiss on his machine, but it's not good. Pulling into the attention of his crew. And it looks like they're gonna work on, the, I don't know if he had a tire down or what. That really jumbled up the front of the field and that has put Zachary Stoltz to the race lead. And I was gonna say Stoltz having a good run right now, one of the go or go home drivers. Another driver that we can also put in that category is Dougie Shears in the 21. The entry out of Michael Norman Motorsports for the other way down running in the seventh position. Not too far behind him, if you look in ninth place, that's where you find Jeremy Jones in the seventh. So a couple of the drivers that had to qualify their way into this race via speed, they are doing very well right now, currently inside of the top 10. Move back up to the front, and there's Joseph Srigley. They have gotten the car back onto the racetrack. Car sounds like it's back up to speed. I wonder if it might have been a tire issue. We're still waiting for confirmation on what was wrong with the 24. But uh, he has fallen at least one lap down. And looks like he may fall another lap down as well. We also have one driver officially out of the race, that being Gonzalez, who never even got to take the green flag. Mechanical engine issue for him when they fired up on the starting grid, getting ready to start their pace lap. 
Right now, Zachary Stoltz looking very really good and already had a uh, go or go home driver pick up a checkered flag this season, that being John Bunnell at Bermuda. And if Stoltz can find victory lane here today, his main goal after that would be trying to get that number 86 in the top 30 in the point standings to have the win count towards a chase position. Another Toyota having a good run right there is James Richardson, former chaser last season. And Richardson be all that competitive here this, this season. Not anything like what he was last year, not really the consistency that we saw out of him in season two, but right now looking good. Trying to get the second half of the regular season off to a good start, as is this guy, the defending champion, Chris Dodd, right now running in the second position. Chris Dodd, let's not forget, his two wins last season that locked him into a chase spot ended up coming in the first half. Or, I'm sorry, no, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. No, they ended up coming in the second half of the regular season at uh, Mid-Ohio, and I believe the second one was the following week at Kentucky. So, Chris Dodd, let's look for him here in this second half of the season to come alive again for the second straight season and maybe pick up his second straight championship. Boy, what a tough break for that driver. He is up to speed. It was indeed a left front tire went down on his car. We have gotten confirmation. In a matter of about 10 laps, he finds himself race leader. Laps down to the race leaders, currently scored in the 41st position. Now, the only thing I can think of he can possibly hope for is maybe this could put him off cycle with everybody else as far as when they would maybe have to make replay pit stops. The only question I would have, though, is can Joseph Srigley pick up two laps, get himself back down the lead lap when and if these drivers do come to pit road? That's kind of the big question, and I'm not really sure you can make two full laps around during the time that a driver's coming down making a free pit stop. Another driver who may be in jeopardy as well is Emmanuel Hartnett. We saw that he had dropped back from the field, and while it worked for the short run, I'm not exactly sure that's gonna work for the long run. He's heading into three, and now Zachary Stoltz just hitting three, so Stoltz is very quick, reeling in the drive down Hunger Chevrolet, and now Emmanuel Hartnett decides he's gonna come to pit road. So Hartnett coming to pit road, getting himself once again even more off sequence with everybody else. I don't know, it may work for him. Like I said, a lot of these drivers that are former winners this season have that luxury, knowing that, you know, they can kind of use a race to go outside the box, try something different, and they get themselves a second win because we've already now, at this point, got two drivers with two wins this season. Matt Haas with wins at Las Vegas and Atlanta. As here comes the race leader, Zachary Stoltz to pit road. Leon Alvarez, Cole Baker, well. Tim Walsh, Carson Scott. Michael Norman in, Jessica Shelton, it's Dallas McIntosh, Dylan Pote, Charles Sanford, Andrew Davis, McIntyre, Fitzwater, Keyes, Dunham, Haas, Flickinger, Hagen, Young, Batson, Sakuli, and Voiles. And Kat Tellier was actually in just the lap before. And that turns the lead over to of Richardson, who I, there he is on pit road. Cody Lamas is in. Garrett Duncan, McCurry, Michaels, Matthews, and JT Bryant. Uh oh, trouble there. Benjamin Miles and, whoa, Keith Batson making contact, and Batson gonna miss his pit stall as a result. Kyle Matthews and Chris Dodd nearly hit each other. And Benjamin Miles with contact with Keith Batson. Batson gonna miss his pit stall, and that's a tough break there for the 39. Pit row just as treacherous as the racetrack itself. I don't know who this lead's gonna cycle around to. It might cycle around to Chris Dodd in the 88, actually. And I think it will. Yeah, I think Chris Dodd, after the cycle of pit stops, will be the race leader. Hartnett's driving around getting his lap back, and now, race has changed, give it to Leon Alvarez. Race to the point. And now he puts Emmanuel Hartnett a lap down again, so Hartnett tried getting off the pit sequence there, and 
didn't really work for him. So he'll end the lead lap after the cycle and now quickly a lap down again. As Alvary shows the way, Dougie Shears now up to second, third to be Zachary Stoltz, and that would move Chris Dodd back into fourth. Give you a full running order in just a moment as we are nearing the halfway point here. Still green, no caution yet here in the Coca-Cola 600. So Alvary's the leader in the top five are Dougie Shears, Zach Jake Baskinger now moves to fourth, and Chris Dodd will move now back to fifth. Sixth is Sean Gallagher, in seventh place is going to be John Arndt. Eighth is Michael Norman. Ninth is Carson Scott. And tenth is James. And eleventh, Jeremy Jones. Twelfth, Tim Walsh. Thirteenth, Jessica Shelton. Fourteenth place, Paul Baker. Fifteenth is Garrett Sinter. Sixteenth, Cody Lama. Seventeenth, Dallas McIntosh. Charles Samper in eighteenth. Nineteenth is Dylan Pote. And complete the top 20 would be Anthony McCurry. Twenty-first is Pat Teller. Twenty-second is Pat Twenty-third, Nathan Hudson. Twenty-fourth is Zachary Fitzwater. Twenty-fifth is Andrew Davis. Twenty-sixth place. That's where you find Joseph Srigley. He's back on the lead lap now. Twenty-seventh is William Duncan. Twenty-eighth is our All-Star Race winner. 29th, Joshua Michaels, 30th, Trent Dunham, 31st place, Matt Haas, 32nd, Cody Hagen, 33rd, JT Bryant, 34th right now, Kyle Matthews, 35th is Dylan Young, 36th place is Zach Flickinger, Joshua Spooley all the way back in 37th, Daniel Voyles way back here now in 38th. 39th place, one lap down, that's Emmanuel Hartnett. 40th, one lap down is Keith Batson after he had issues on pit road. is Benjamin Miles. Oh, he's still sitting on pit road. Let's not forget he and uh, Keith Batson were the two that made contact on pit road. So, uh, may have punctured a nose in the radiator of the 42. He's had an extended stay on pit road, and he is right now scored four laps down. He'll be more than that after this. Whereas Baskinger goes to the race lead on Alvarez. So Baskinger now up to the front here. The only driver out of the race at this point, finishing officially 42nd, will be Brandon Gonzalez. And that's your full field rundown. As we're getting close to the halfway point here of the 600, and Jake Baskinger is now the current race leader. And this could definitely be redemption on his mind and the fact of he came into the All-Star race yesterday as the defending winner and was the first retiree after a pit road incident. Win. We know he knows how to get around this racetrack. And also, we know that uh, a second win would certainly help him out as far as getting into a D spot. I said back when they made the green flag pit stops and I never got to finish my point uh, as far as uh, luxury of being able to be outside of the box. Two drivers that definitely have that are rookie Matt Haas, a two-time winner this season at Las Vegas and Atlanta, and Kyle Matthews, two-time winner at Rockingham UK, and our most recent race at Richmond. Right now, they would be the only two drivers that are, and I say this tentatively, just based on we don't know what's going to happen for the remainder of the second, this second half of the season. They have confirmed locked up spots in this season's chase. For Kyle Matthews, it would be his second straight Hershey's Cup Series chase for Matt Haas, obviously, being a rookie, it would be his first. It was an opportunity for other drivers to maybe pick up their second win. Jake Baskinger, former winner this season at Bristol Dirt. If he could pick up a second win, we would then probably be putting his name in as far as the chase of the championship. And look what just worked his way up here to second place. He's now trying to take the spot. That's Michael Norman. Michael Norman, this will be his final call of 600 as uh, he, he announced he will be retiring at the end of this season. And that would be for Michael Norman to be able to pick up the win here, maybe put himself in, ironically, what would be his first chase of his career in the Hershey's Cup Series. Matter of fact, Michael Norman, this would be his, if my calculations are correct, 86th start in the Hershey's Cup Series, and he has yet to go to victory lane. Pretty good run for a couple of the Michael Norman stars there. His teammate, Doug
Dougie Shears there in the fourth position. We've got some other players that are starting to work their way up here as well. How about our Daytona 500 winner, Sean Galligan? He's up here in the mix at Rocket League Ford Fusion. John Art. Showdown winner during All-Star Weekend. He's up here now running currently in the eighth position. Dalton. Having a decent run right now inside the top 10. Currently scored in ninth, just ahead of Cole Baker, just behind the lap car of Emmanuel Hartnett. We may have a battle for the lead on our hands. We do. Michael Norman was reeling in. Jake Bassett was wasting no time, moving by the number 59 Wilson Security Dodge Dart. We get his team Chevrolet of Michael Norman to the race lead. We are more than halfway home now, lap 43 on the board. It gives us the stripe, a total of 37 laps remaining. And these drivers more than likely are gonna have to make at least one more pit stop before this race is over. They all came to pit road somewhere around laps 35 to 37. So they'll more than likely According to my calculations, have to pit somewhere between 15 to 10 laps remaining. Unless they decide to short pit, maybe somewhere between laps 50 to 60, and then the rest of the way, not have to worry about pit stops in the closing stages. And one thing about long running races, green flag runs, drivers tend to end up falling laps down, and we've already got uh, Manuel Hartnett down a lap, down a lap, and now the race leaders of Michael Norman, Jake Baskinger, are about to catch the tail end of the lead lap, Daniel Boyles, in the 26. This is when uh, lap traffic is starting for this race as well. Got a couple other drivers not too far ahead, including Dylan Young and two-time winner this season, Kyle Matthews, 36 to 37, they're scored. As 38th place, Daniel Boyles now will fall a lap down. I thought he was going to, but Michael Norman, I don't know what happened right there with the three car, but he almost seemed to come to a stop. It almost looked like what happened to Srigley earlier. I just thought maybe he might have a tire issue, but that's not the case. That allowed his teammate Dougie Shears to get around for the race lead. I don't know, maybe, did Norman get the apron? And that might have gotten his car out of shape, and he had to lift to avoid spinning the thing out on the low. Now Norman back to the inside on his teammate Dougie Shears to try and take the race lead back. And kind of a freak thing right there. I don't know what happened with Michael Norman. Whatever the case, he was able to hang on to it. And now he's back out in front. Weird. Let's see what happens here in turn one again. It happened when he was trying to get around Daniel Boyles to put him a lap down. Let's see if anything happens this time. Norman keeps low, heading into one, gets to the left rear, and... Well, this time, he keeps it down the inside. I'll, I bet Michael Norman might have gotten the apron. Might have gotten the apron, almost shot up the racetrack, and had to lift in order to avoid doing that, and that might have been what checked everybody else back up. Well, now, Michael Norman has Boyles in his rear view mirror and put Boyles a lap down. We now have 37 cars on the lead lap. Now make it 36. The Joseph Srigley, who was off the pit sequence with everyone after a left front went down earlier on. Now he's going to fall a lap down to the leaders once again. And with Srigley coming to pit road right now, with 31 laps remaining, I don't know, he might actually be able to make it the rest of the way on this tank of fuel. So Srigley might be just within his pit window and might not have to pit again. And we saw that Srigley was able to race his way back on the lead lap after the cycle of green flag pit stops. He was back around the mid-20s, but I don't know. This this could work out for Joseph Srigley to maybe get some kind of a finish here. I don't know if he'll necessarily be able to get up to the front and win the thing, but who knows? Kind of making the best out of a terrible situation, Joseph Srigley, anyway. Michael Norman, Jake Baskinger, they have opened over a second lead between themselves and the third place car, which right now is Leon Alvarez in the 33. But that gap could close up again because here comes tail end of the lead lap cars just ahead. This time being Dylan Young and Kyle Matthews. 
now Kyle Matthews, good friends of Michael Norman, but you know, friends off track, on track, you are rivals, you are competitors, you want to stay on the lead lap, and so we'll have to see how easily Michael Norman's able to make the move on these guys, and he may not be able to make a move on them. Jake Baskin is going to use the car as a pick, tried to the end of Norman, not going to be successful, and he gets the apron there in the middle of the one. Look at this, Dylan Young trying to pinch Michael Norman down, but Norman the inside on Dylan Young. And now we'll look to put the deuce down a lap, and he will do that, he that as he will move by. Baskinger follows in the tire tracks. Dylan Young now a lap down, and now they'll go to work on Kyle Matthews, who's running currently in the 35th position. In the side draft, and Norman on the inside of one will very easily clear Kyle Matthews. Michael Norman do all the work and then enjoying the results as he follows the tire tracks. So now 34 cars left on the lead lap. Next cars that Michael Norman would encounter will be in a bit here. Joshua Michaels, Nathan Hudson. And they've got maybe about a straightaway on race leader Michael Norman. Meanwhile, Colby, Seth Colby, teammates battling for the fourth position. Gallagher has it. And actually, no, I'm wrong. That's for third place, actually. Yeah, looks like Gallagher will hang on to the spot. Baker back to fourth. Alvarez there in fifth. Just on right now in seventh. is in seventh. Stoltz in eighth. Arth in ninth. And Dougie should now drop back into tenth position. Back up towards the front. See if anything's developing between Norman and Baskinger. Doesn't really look like it. Who's still continuing to run nose to tail. But as they're doing that, teammates out of Central Baker Motorsports kind of working here along with Lee and Al reeled them in. Last time by it was 1.3 second advantage Norman had over Galligan. Let's see if that gets cut down at all this lap. They hit the stripe, and at the line this time, the gap is 1.33. They cut it down by 100. So they gained, but they didn't really gain. It kind of stayed status quo. Keep in mind, though, they were making their way around the lap machine of Kyle Matthews, so we'll see if this lap, if anything, changes. Looks like they've lost Lee and Alvarez as a wingman to help them with the hard draft. Now it's two Fords. He's down a Chevy and a Dodge. And we'll see this time if the gap closes up at all. Looks like it did that time. Yes, it did. They closed the gap up this time by three tenths, and I think a big reason why is you can see there's about two further separation between Norman and Baskinger. Baker and Galligan were, excuse me, were actually tucked up one behind the other, and it look, looks like they've swapped places now. Maybe Baker overheated a little bit, running directly behind Galligan. So now Galligan. Oh no! Wait, no! Galligan's coming to pit road. And this should be right within the fuel window that these drivers will be able to make it the rest of the way. So remember I said, didn't know if these drivers were gonna try short pitting as soon as their fuel window came into play, or if they were gonna wait until about 15, 10 laps to go. It looks like Galligan is gonna go with strategy one and come to pit road now with the express purpose of making it the rest of the way on fuel. We'll have to see if that works out for him. Another driver is just hitting pit road. That is uh, Cat Tellier and Blaine Keys. And here comes Jake Baskin being up the second position. He is on pit road now. So now we have to see how far the drivers decide to stretch it. Lap car of Emmanuel Hartnett is in. Here comes Dylan Pote to Andrew Davis, Dallas McIntosh, they're in. Is Michael Norman or Cole Baker coming to pit road? Here comes Baker. Baker was in second. Alvarez, he's coming to pit road. He was in third. Lap car of Kyle Matthews as well as the lap car of Daniel Voiles. So now, the question is what about Michael Norman? Fitzwater's in. Norman right there. Chris Dodd stayed out. Jessica Shelton stayed out. Dougie Shear stayed out as did uh, Stoltz, Arndt, Richardson, and Sidner. And now Norman peels off to come to pit road. So does Chris Dodd, so does Shelton, and I believe 
John Art decided to stay out that lap. Dougie Shears is in. Next staying out another lap. And there is the new race leader, John Art, staying out an extra lap. I believe he and Richardson are the last two drivers yet to hit pit road. Everybody else, to my knowledge, has hit pit road. John Art's coming to pit road this time. About the 11 of Richardson. Yep, Richardson's coming in as well. So we'll have to see, there's Baskinger. Where does Baskinger come out in relation to Michael Norman, and where does Michael Norman come out in relation to John Art? Working his way around the lap machine of Benjamin Miles. Miles spent a number of laps on pit road after contact with Keith Batson during the last cycle of green flag pit stops. And Baskinger gets around Michael Norman. So Jake Baskinger may cycle around as the current race leader after the pit stops have completely cycled. See where he crosses the line. And Baskinger is scored in third. Scored in third behind John Arn, who I believe he just passed coming off of pit road. So I believe that is going to be the race leader right there, Jake Baskinger in the 59. And now we know these drivers are set up for the finish of this race. They can make it the rest of the way on fuel. And is the caution flag out? I think I just saw the yellow lights on it. Indeed, the caution flag is out. The yellow flag is waving. We are under yellow for the first time here at the Coke 600. It took us till lap 62, more than three quarters of the way through this race. But the first yellow flag is waving just after the seckle of green flag pit stops. And a number of drivers are gonna be very happy to see that. There were a lot of drivers here that could have gone a lap down. William Duncan, Cody Hagen, Matt Haas, Blaine Keys. Lee Shears is on pit road. Shears, who was up inside the top 10 for majority of the uh, second half of this race, was, I believe, in the 10th position when the green flag pit stops began. Now you gotta wonder, is anybody gonna come to pit road top off? They were all just on pit road, so I very much doubt it. And nope, doesn't look like anybody's gonna come to pit road here. I can't say I blame him. Track position gonna be really a key issue here on this restart, and we will more than likely restart with less than 15 to go. But for now, we're gonna step aside, see what put us under this yellow flag. Jake Baskinger is the current race leader in the Coca-Cola 600. Well, this was certainly the most interesting turn of events, maybe kind of one of the more freakish looking incidents I've seen take place here. John Arndt, coming off of pit road, he had stayed out, led a lap, Completed his service, comes back onto pit lane. Now watch this. Dougie Shears doesn't realize that Arndt is merging back onto the racetrack. He's trying to get to the inside of Trent Dunham for position and just runs over John Arndt. Now why was Dougie Shears making that move? Watch in just a moment. Trent Dunham heading here into turn three. Right there, the engine lets go. So you've got to wonder if maybe Trent Dunham was signaling to Dougie Shears to go by him, realizing something was wrong, or maybe... Dougie Shears, running right behind Trent Dunham, was starting to see maybe parts come out of the car or something, realized something was wrong, and he tried to get himself to the inside as quickly as possible, but while he's trying to get by Trent, John Art's trying to merge back onto the racetrack, so, wow. Three drivers, three different agendas. Art just trying to merge back into traffic. Shears trying to get by Trent Dunham, realizing Dunham probably had a problem, had an issue. And Trent Dunham trying to get out of everybody's way, probably realizing he was having some mechanical issue. And then the engine finally explodes into the entrance of three. But that was enough to put us under caution. Look at here, Tim Walsh actually up and into the wall as everybody was trying to get around Dougie Shears, who did get the car refired, I do believe. Well, maybe not. Maybe the car actually got stuck there on the uh, apron of the racetrack. But uh, that's what brought the caution flag out. Not a multi-car wreck or anything like that. Just maybe one of the strangest incidents I have ever seen take place under green flag conditions here after the cycle of green flag pit stops at Charlotte. But without further ado, it's time to go back, get ready for a thrilling finish. They're all going to line up and try it here again here at Charlotte for the Coca-Cola 600. 
Well, signal has been given of one lap to green, and we will have lap traffic on the inside line because it will be a total of 16 laps to go when we get the green flag. No, I'm sorry. It will be 14 laps to go when we get the green flag. Nathan Hudson, Kyle Matthews, Daniel Voiles, along with Dylan Young, Manuel Hartnett, Keith Batson, Dougie Shears, and Benjamin Miles all will line up on the inside line. They are all at least one or more laps down. Jake Baskinger, the race leader. Michael Norman, second. Cole Baker, third. Alvarison, fourth. Jessica Shelton, now fifth. Then Galligan, John Arndt, despite the contact of getting run into the back of with Dougie Shears, he's currently running in seventh, so gotta wonder how up to speed that car may be. Chris Dodd, Zachary Stoltz, and Garrett Sidner. That is your top 10. How about the CJ Racing drivers? Alvarez in fourth, Dodd in eighth, and Garrett Sidner in 10th. Great run for all three of those cars so far. We're gonna have to see how this sets us up for the finish of this race. Will we run green to the finish, or was this not the last caution flag we've seen in this Coca-Cola 600 race? Pace car peels off. It will be 14 laps to go when the green flag comes back out, they hit the restart box. Green flag is back out here in the Coca-Cola 600, and Hudson gets a good jump. He may be able to get back on the tail end of the lead lap. He's going to clear the passenger, and Hudson now is back on the lead lap. Now he's definitely hoping for a quickie caution. Passenger going to clear Kyle Matthews. So does Norman. So does Baker. Alfrey's not quite yet clear. Now he clears him, top four and fifth. Lap traffic, and with the exception of Nathan Hudson. Norman all over the back bumper, back to the and here he comes looking to the inside, trying to use Nathan Hudson as a pick. Let's not forget, Nathan Hudson and Michael Norman, they were teammates last season in Hershey's Cup. So maybe Hudson gonna work with Michael Norman here, even though they're both on different teams now. Side by side for the lead, side by side for third. Norman and Baskinger. Baker turns back Alvarez. Norman trying on the inside line, getting back to the wall, almost slides up into Baskinger, but he will clear Baskinger for the race lead off of four. And now Norman trying to get by Nathan Hudson, trying to put a lap machine between himself and the battle line for second. And Alvarez now to the inside line for second on Baskinger. Norman's going to clear Nathan Hudson. Now there's going to be a lap machine between himself and Baskinger, who hangs on to second off of two. Now Baskinger crosses over, looks to the inside of Hudson, trying to get by that lap machine, and sends his sights back on Michael Norman. Norman hits the stripe. It is 11 laps to go here in the Coca-Cola 600. Norman, Baskinger, Alvarez, Baker, and Shelton. That is your top ten or top five as they run right now. There's a bit of a gap back to Chris Dodd in sixth. John Ark somehow, some way, even after getting run over by Dougie Shears on our only caution so far, he's still hanging on for seventh. Senior eighth, Gallagher ninth, and Richardson's now cracked the top ten. As Norman shows the way, battle may be on for second. Alvarez peeks to the inside on Baskinger. And Alvarez trying to take the spot, and it looks like he will clear Baskinger now on the back straightaway. was all the way back in season one at Freeway Super Speedway, if memory serves me correctly. Trying to go to victory lane for the second time in his career and the first time since season one for Michael Norman. He tried to victory lane for the first time in his Hershey's Cup Series career. Third season, Hershey's Cup, still looking for career win number one. But Baskinger, man, that car looking really good. He is driving the wheels off that thing. Gonna try and get back by Alvarez. He will complete the pass and now sets his sights on Michael Norman. He's definitely been Norman's Achilles heel. Those two have been battling for the lead for a good majority of the second half of this race, especially during the time when the green flag pit stops began the second cycle of the match. And 
now Baskinger trying to dispose of Alvarez. Alvarez not going to go away so quickly. Here he comes back to the inside on Baskinger. Baskinger cannot shake himself loose of Alvarez and just focus on trying to reel in Mr. Norman. And every time these two battle for the second position, that allows Norman a little bit of a reprieve. And oh, caution, I think might be out again. No, it is not. No, we are still green. It looked like the flagman was holding the yellow flag, but maybe that was just the, maybe that was just the flag stand I was seeing there. The lights are still green here on the racetrack. So we are still green flag racing. I'm not exactly sure why it looked like the flagman was holding the caution flag, though. As Alvarez now gets back into second, and now Baskinger finds himself not only losing second, he may lose third, because here comes Cole Baker. Look at Levi McIntyre. Where'd that 99 come from? He's all of a sudden up into the sixth position. Absolutely out of nowhere. And now Anthony McCrory's almost in, almost gonna crack the top 10. Running just behind Garrett Singer, John Art, Jessica Shelton, and James Richardson. But Mike, how about Levi McIntyre? Who absolutely out of nowhere. He's almost about to crack the top five with about five laps to go. Norman. Gets the five to go signal. Alvarez clear in second. These two might be the ones to settle it. Cole goes to third. Chris Dodd into fourth. And, no and uh, Levi McIntyre has now taken the fifth position away from Jake Baskinger, who has slipped all the way from second back to sixth in about five, six laps. And look at Baker, look at Baker, using the lap machine of Nathan Hudson to get himself closer to the back bumper of Leon Alvarez. But don't count out Levi McIntyre, that car has flown up here into the top five. And Alvarez is reeling in Michael Norman with about three and a half laps to go. The win is not secure by any stretch of the imagination. Alvarez continuing to close the gap. Last time by, he was about two tenths behind. This time by, let's see if he closes the gap up at all on Michael Norman. This time, scoring monitor says, just about status quo. And look at Levi McIntyre. He cleared Baker for fourth. He now is going by Chris Dodd for the third spot. If Levi McIntyre can get up there to the top two, these guys better watch out. Now Baker trying to get the fourth spot back from McIntyre, no dice, McIntyre hangs on to the spot, and there are two laps to go, Norman, Alvarez, right on the back bumper, here comes Chris Dodd trying to make it a three-man fight, McIntyre wants to make it a four-man fight, as Alvarez looks to the bottom on Michael Norman, Norman trying to get to run the high side, he succeeds, hangs on to the spot off of two, here comes Chris Dodd in third, Norman in fourth, Baker in fifth, this thing ain't over yet. Michael Norman trying to hang on to the final season, trying to pick up career win number one in the Hershey's Cup Series. Alvarez is there. White flag displayed. Here comes Alvarez to the inside. McIntyre looking for third off of Chris Dodd. Baskinger looking for fifth off of Cole Baker. Alvarez trying to hold the bottom, slips up a little. Norman ricochets off the high side. Back to the top position. Here comes McIntyre. And Norman hang on for two more corners through three and four. Alvarez trying to mount a charge, not close enough. It finally happens. Three seasons in Hershey's Cup, and Michael Norman gets career win number one. He wins the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. And maybe trying to pull off a Tony Stewart in his final season, his swan song season. Michael Norman may have just clinched himself a spot in his first ever Hershey's Cup Series chase for the championship. Talk about a Cinderella story. Michael Norman. Career win number one. Maybe career chase appearance number one. And could we be setting up for career championship number one in his final Hershey's Cup Series season. What a race. Two green flag pit stop cycles, a late caution, and what a finish.
Norman with the win. Lee and Alvary so close. He dove it down and turned one twice, but could not hold that inside line. He'll have to settle for second. I think the comeback of the race goes to Levi McIntyre. That car first half of the race was running back in the 30s and fought his way up to a third place finish. How about that? Chris Dodd gets fourth, Cole Baker fifth. Baskinger was a player late. He'll finish in sixth though. Garrett Sidner in seventh. So all three of the CJ racing cars finish in the top seven. James Richardson gets eighth. How about Zachary Fitzwater from out of nowhere to get ninth? And Charles Sanford also pulls off an out of nowhere top 10 finish in the 10th position. Look on down through the remainder of the finishing results. John Art gets 11th, McCurry 12th, Jones, Galligan, and Michaels, your top 15, Shelton, Hagen, Poteet, Davis, and McIntosh, your top 20. Then it was Keyes, Srigley still managed to finish in the top 25 after the tire issue he had early on, 22nd place for him, so at least made something good out of a horrible start to his day. Tim Walsh, JT Bryan, and Joshua Zaccoli, the top 25. Then Cat Tellier, Zachary Stoltz, all the way back in the 27th position. Wonder what happened with him. And then Flickinger, Cody Lamas, and William Duncan, your top 30. Only cars left to finish on the lead lap. Matt Haas in 31st, and Carson Scott in 32nd. And then the rest of these drivers finished a lap down. Nathan Hudson, Manuel Hartnett, Keith Batson, Dylan Young, Kyle Matthews, Dougie Shears, Daniel Voiles, and Benjamin Miles. And then two cars finished out of the race, both due to mechanical issues. Trent Dunham finishes 41st, and Brandon Gonzalez never even got to take the green flag. He finishes in 42nd. Let's take a look at how the points look like heading into our next race after Michael Norman takes the checkered flag here in the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. 